is the first chip implanted into the human brain that directly links the human brain with the hard drive of a physical computer without a wire, without a cable. We have the biology that allows us to do, already we have this, what those chips are allowing us to do. When we learn to access these mirror neurons, in a very specific way, we have super learning. I do this personally. I mean, we can learn very, very quickly. And we are at this pivotal crossroad where we are developing and evolving our technology so quickly, we have to make a choice as a society. How much of our power will we give away to the machines? How much of it sounds like a science fiction movie? Where do those movies come from? This is consciousness in those movies asking us to explore how much of ourselves do we want to give away. And here's a perfect example, Elon Musk. Elon Musk has developed a, a new company called Neuralink. And his philosophy is, not, and I'm not sliding him for this, because th this is the way society learns, this is the way science learns, by pushing the boundaries. And Elon Musk is a brilliant man, he's pushing those boundaries. And, and I think he'll push them until he has pushed back from society. Neuralink is the first chip implanted into the human brain that directly links the human brain with the hard drive of a physical computer without a wire, without a cable. So it's like Bluetooth technology. It's, it's beyond Bluetooth, but it's you can think of it that way. Right. So what he's saying is if you can't beat the machines, join them. He said let's let's interface, let's become one with these machines. Right. So what do you so, think about that? So they, they have the chips that can be implanted into the brain. And I mean, think about what's happening. These are silicon chips that have contact points that are interfacing with human neurons. My personal feeling is it's a mistake, my personal feeling. I, I believe it's a, it's a dangerous path. And I also believe it's an unnecessary path because we have the biology that allows us to do already, we have this, what those chips are allowing us to do if we awaken that biology. The Matrix is the perfect example of this. In the movie The Matrix, the people who were awakening into the, the new reality, when they needed to learn something quickly, they had a port at the base of their skull and they would physically plug a cable into a computer, a hard drive, and they could download and learn programs very quickly. We have the ability to do right now through what are called mirror neurons. Interestingly, mirror neurons are a specialized class of neurons in the human brain that don't know the difference between watching an experience and having the experience. So when, when we, and we already know this, for yeah. example, this is why you can lie on your couch on a Sunday afternoon, watching a soccer game or a golf tournament or whatever, you're lying down, but you're watching this and your heart's racing, your muscles are tense, you might be perspiring, you might be you know, breathing heavy, and, but you're just lying there. I mean, if you think about that, it makes no yeah. sense. Your mirror neurons think you're the one on the field. Right, playing which is why we watch. It, it is. It's, uh, and these are very powerful neurons, and they're also powerful in addiction. This is, this is why pornography, for example, is so powerful. It's so addicting because when someone witnesses those images with the mirror neurons, it triggers the same, the oxytocin and the same dopamine, the same very addictive chemistry because the brain doesn't know the difference between watching and having the experience. So this is, these are the, the bad things that we hear. The good things that we don't often hear is because the brain doesn't know the difference. When we learn to access these mirror neurons in a very specific way, we have super learning, Brian. We can learn, so I, I do this personally. I mean, we can learn very, very quickly. Uh, we can learn music, you can learn to perform the way another musician is performing. You can learn a foreign language very quickly. You can retain, not only retain, but recall information. Very super learning, super memory, super retention, super recall from the mirror neurons. And here's the kicker. Those mirror neurons in the, in the human brain are in the sixth layer of the neurocortex that is made possible through a mysterious DNA fusion that happened 200,000 years ago. When we showed up, who or whatever 
is responsible for our existence, whatever's the source of the intervention that appears to have happened, uh, made those neurons possible. And it gives us the ability, if we choose to access this potential, to, to learn and, uh, and experience uh, very, very quickly. We don't need to be physically connected to a computer. But this is an example of, of where, if we don't know that, and we go down this road, I mean, it won't stop there. Uh, we end up giving our power away right. to, to a device. And you've heard the old, the old axiom, if uh, use it or lose it. And, and we run, I think, the risk of, of becoming a species where we begin to lose this tremendous, sure. beautiful potential. And we are losing parts of that already because we're no longer kind of learning the same way and pushing our brains to learn languages. It's all there on Google ask, Translate. Ask, yeah. ask the young people today to solve a mathematic problem the without the, the use of a phone or a calculator. Yeah. Now, I come from a generation, and this has all happened in one generation. When I was in school back in the 1950s, 60s, early 70s, engineers were putting the first man on the moon using a slide rule. Yeah. Now, some of our viewers don't even know what a slide rule is, but <laughs> it, is, it is the precursor uh, to the, it has no electricity, it is uh, a gadget that looked like a ruler that had a, a slide that you could use to, to move and correlate certain numbers. And this is the way engineering happened in World War II, the atomic bomb. This is how we solved our problems. And young people now, if they don't have, they don't have either a calculator, which is almost obsolete, uh, uh, the physical calculator, they're all on the phones now, or they don't have a phone, they cannot solve the problems. Yeah, well we are now cyborgs, whether we want to admit it or not. Most people are anxious that they don't have the phone, they refer to it all the time, it's part of yeah. their consciousness. And so, as I've heard Elon talk about, he said the problem now, well, maybe not the problem, maybe the good part, according to you, is bandwidth. Because we have our thumbs to get the information from our brain into this, this network, this internet platform. And so Elon is proposing that we jack up that bandwidth yeah. and get all of the download and interaction between us and this supercomputing, super interconnected network around the world and then take ourselves to that next level. And so I think Elon is a proponent or he's just saying it's going to happen, so let's make it happen. Yeah, and he's I, he's just saying let's go right. with the flow. This is where it's going. Right, and I yeah. see what you're saying because if we do that, there's not many ways of going back. We, we, already, doing, we already are doing that to a certain extent. <laughs> Aren't we? Well, we are, and I, I have to be, uh, for transparency, I'll, I'll just say that I probably am what you would call a purist. Uh, there's a part of me that so respects the intricacy uh, of the human being, our, our existence. We are so mysterious, we are so complex. And every time scientists think they've got it nailed, it's all buttoned up, and they think they understand that they don't know what, what's really happening. Human brain states is a perfect example. We can talk about that in just a moment. I think until we fully understand who we are and our potential, it's a mistake. Right, to, we're closing off that door, we might not ever go back there. We're giving in the way. It's, it's a mistake to, to lose that. 50 years from now, there'll be the science fiction movie of the people that stayed away from the tech and the people it, that went into the it, tech. It, I think it is happening right now. That's exactly okay. what, what you're seeing. And you know, if some people go to extremes. I think, I think the machines, can be useful as tools. My caution is not to embrace them as a crutch, where we have to have them. Right. If a machine can tell me when I'm creating the conditions in my body to access this potential, then that machine is very useful. Once I understand that, I can toss the machine away. I don't need the, the gadget, because now I know who I am. If, if the machine, if I feel like I need the machine to take me to this Place every time. So I have a bad day or I'm a little stressed and I say, oh, I gotta hook up to my machine, you know, my, my PC and run this app to tell me when I'm in the right brain state or, or whatever, the right heart state or, or whatever it is. And I think that's where we, we run the risk and we have to be conscious. We have to be conscious and cautious as, as we do this. I'm tripping on a little bit because I, I wanted to go back. I, I'm not sliding Elon Musk. He is a, a, of a different generation than we are. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, he's done amazing things, he sees potential, and he says, let's explore this potential. And so he probably is accelerating the evolution, wherever that evolution is gonna go, we have to make a choice now, where we didn't have to make it five years ago. Now we have to choose, are we going to follow this path? Now I have to tell you, Brian, audiences all over the world, when I share this story, and I've got a presentation that goes with it, and I, before I even share my opinion, I can see people in the audience, and when they see the picture of the chip, I say, Here, here's the chip, here's what it does. 
and people are out there, they're shaking their heads. And then when I say, in my opinion, this is a dangerous thing to do, it's a slippery slope, I think we may not want to go here. People stand up and they applaud. Yeah. People, at least in the ilk that we are communicating with, believe that there is a, um, we're pushing uh, a boundary, and it's a boundary they don't want to cross.